Good morning, church. We thank you for joining us here today. It's a beautiful day to come together and worship God. Amen. Here we go. You're the earth beneath my feet, and I'm standing on a promise. Mama, so sweet, and your word is etched on my heart, and there's nothing that can wipe away these permanent marks.
when I'm broken and down to nothing. I know that. God is faithful. God has been good. He has been so wonderful. In the middle of the circumstance, it doesn't matter what we go through day in, day out. He remains faithful, even when we are not faithful. That's just who He is. That's what He does. So we bless, we bless His name today. Amen. With this next song, let's worship together. Make his 
Hallelujah. How many of you know that He is for you? He's not against you. He is for you. I think we need to hear that. And I love that part of the song. It repeats over, He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. Because sometimes we just need, that needs to sink into our mind that He's not against us. He is for us. It doesn't matter what your past looks like. I want to tell you, church, it doesn't matter what yesterday looked like. What matters is that you are here and He is here. And where two or three are gathered in His name, God is in the midst of His people. He is here today. In a moment's notice, God can do something amazing today. I want to read to you that scripture that we're singing. Number 6, 24 through 26. I love this. It says, may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. How many believe that? How many of you guys want that? That is God's promise to you. To be with you all the time. We want to pray. I know there's a lot of need out there. I know there's, there's so many things happening in our world right now. And there are just so many people that just need prayer. Last night we were here in, in a beautiful memorial service. And even as we're you know, streaming this online prayer requests were coming in by people that were watching it. Just need, they need this. They need the presence of God. They need hope. They need God in their life. And if you're watching today, if you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube and you need prayer, we have a link right there on the stream where you can click on there and send us your prayer request because we want to pray for every single person's need. Would you help me, church? Let's pray for all the people that are in need right now. Father, we come before you to your presence. Father, God, thank you that we have access to you, to your presence, knowing that you hear us, knowing that you are for us, that you are with us. And as your children, Father God, we call upon you and say, Father, would you, would you help these people in need, those people that are sick, that are fighting this virus, Lord, that need your, they need your healing power this very moment, Lord? Would you be with them? Lord, would you strengthen their, their bodies, their immune system, Father God, that they would create these antibodies, Lord, to kick out this virus from their body? Would you be with them, Father? Lord, we continue to pray for the, the medical professionals, everyone that works in the front lines, everybody that is helping, Father. I pray, Lord, that you would give them strength, Lord, to continue. Give them wisdom, Father God, to be able to help their patients. Lord, we pray, Father, for uh, even, even those people that have to make decisions, Father God, at a company level or at a, at a county level, or even at a, a state level, Father God, we pray, Lord, that you would be with them and help them, Lord. Give them wisdom, Father. Be with them, Lord, in all their decisions, Lord. More importantly, Lord, we come to you as a church, Lord, knowing the need that we have for you. If there was ever a need for you, Lord, it is today. And we come to you, Lord, asking, Lord, that you would be with us, Lord, as a country, as a nation. Be with us, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Father, because we know that you are here today and you're going to do something amazing in this place. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Come on, come you put your hands together. Give God your best praise this morning. Amen. Hey, we're so glad that you uh, were able to make it this morning. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to everybody from Lifeline Church that is here with us today. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. You guys are amazing. Love the way you worship God. Um, and I want you, if you're watching us online, would you share this feed right now? Uh, go ahead and share this feed because we got Pastor Pepe from Lifeline Church that's going to be sharing the word. So you want to you wanna share this feed with somebody that needs a word of encouragement this morning. I also want to pray for the offering, the tithes. If, uh, if you give throughout the week, thank you so much for being able to do that. Uh, we have those options online where you can give, give through our website or app. 
Uh, you can also do that if you're here present today. You can do that here uh, in the front, in the buckets, or out in the back. But I want to pray and I want to bless each and every one of you. Father, thank you once again. Lord, we, we thank you for every person, Lord who faithfully, Lord, continues to give. In the middle of uncertainty, in the middle of this pandemic, Father God, they have not wavered in their faith, Father God, and they continue to trust in you. Lord, I pray that your word would come to life in, in, their, in their lives, Father God, that you would open the windows of heaven, Father God, and pour out blessing when they're supposed to be needing, Father God, you're providing blessing in their life, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that they would be able to see your hand in everything that they do, Lord, that they would have no lack or need in their life, Lord. And we pray that as a church, Lord, we would continue to reach out to those people that need you, Father God, in this moment, that we would provide encouragement and hope, and more importantly, point them to Jesus, Father. We thank you once again. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Go ahead and pass up, church. As you pass up, we got some announcements. Hello everyone, we're excited to be able to worship God together. We want you to know that our number one priority is your safety and the safety of your family. We have taken safety measures to maintain the well-being of the sanctuary. Please follow the direction of our ushers to take a seat. If this is your first time here, we'd love to get to know you. Please visit our website and fill out a connection form. We love our vital kids. So for their safety and the safety of our volunteers, we will not be having kids classes during phase two. However, we have prepared an online program for them. Please visit vitalchurch.com forward slash vital kids. For the time being, engaged youth services will be online only on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. In-house services will be held Saturday at 6 p.m. English and 8 p.m. Spanish. Sunday, 10 a.m. English and 12 p.m. Spanish. If you would like to partner with us financially to share the message of love, hope, and salvation of Jesus Christ, there are four secure ways to donate at any moment during the service. Use the Vital Church app and click Donate. Visit our website, vitalchurch.com, and click the Donate icon on the top right corner. Text to give at 210-405-6448 and follow the instructions. You can also use an envelope or use a kiosk located in the lobby. Be part of our online family and follow us on social media. Stay connected to all the latest announcements and updates by downloading the Vital Church app or visiting our website. We pray that God speaks to you and His love and grace embrace you throughout the rest of this service. We are Vital Church. you guys continue to believe that God is going to uplift you and continue to strengthen you and, and just give you all the, the, the comfort that, that you need and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Please continue to pray for the Garza family, the Chavez family. They really, really need it. Amen? Amen. Well, this, uh, uh, this uh, past uh, Monday, I called a friend of mine, Pastor Pepe Cervantes from Harlingen, and I said, brother, I got a full week. I got a full week. And I need help. And uh, that's what friends are for, right? And he, he had texted me. He had texted me about a week earlier. He said, Pastor, if you ever need anything, I'm right here. And then he tells me on Monday, you know when I texted you is I knew you had a full plate. 
I knew you had a lot going on and I'm burdened for you. And so we just felt it was, a, 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 again, like always, a godly connection and that God was calling him to our church for this coming Sunday. And so that's today. That's you guys. And so you guys get the great honor and the great privilege of hearing of this man of God. He is the pastor of Lifeline Heart of Worship in Harlingen, Texas, one of the most thriving churches in South Texas. They are on fire for God, just like Vital Church. And here's the best thing about it. He's going to continue with our series. So we're still in the book of Acts and we're still with our series, Church on Fire. We're talking about how we can change the world just like that early church did. So I want you to stand and honor this man of God, my dear friend, Pastor Pepe Cervantes. Come on, give it up for the Lord. I said, give it up for the Lord. If you're truly grateful this morning, we should praise Him with all we have. The Bible says that if we don't worship, the rocks will cry out. I wonder if there's anybody here that for five seconds can open their mouth, their mask, and just say, Thank you, Lord. I feel your presence. I will continue to walk in faith over fear in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor Charlie. He had been in my heart several weeks. And so when he called me, it was not a, a matter of yes or no. It was right away, like, I'm ready. You tell me what you need me to do. And yes, we are on Sabbath. Glad to see our Lifeline family with us here this morning as well. And I do want to just take this time before you sit down. You know, there's so much, and I've seen commercials left and right. I'm saying, and you know this, and left and right about how people are honoring our frontliners. You see the policemen, and you see the nurses, and you see the doctors, and everybody, all the frontliners. But you know what? I have yet to see one commercial about a pastor. And I would like to honor your pastor today. Because while many churches remain closed, he spoke, the Holy Spirit spoke to him to keep it open. Can we honor your pastor this morning? He is part of the front line. He is part of the front line. And our pastors in the valley that are open, we honor you as well. For being brave enough to do what needs to be done in Jesus' name. I am so grateful. And, and as you're standing, I hear you in a powerful series. I had, a, had an opportunity to be with you all. A couple of weeks ago, I was sitting right there in church on fire. I think I got saved that day. It was powerful. Y'all didn't have baptisms. and that, I would have got baptized as well. But it was a powerful sermon. And I'm going to continue with that series. If you're ready, say, I am ready. If you're tuning in online, we welcome you. Watch what it says in John 16, 33. It will be on your screen. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Lord, we're grateful, Lord. We're grateful, Lord, for what you're doing in this place. We're grateful, Lord, Father, that in the midst of crisis, Father God, you are showing up and showing off. So we ask your Holy Spirit to continue to do the same thing during this service. We already feel your presence here. The, 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 the praise and worship, Father, has set the atmosphere for you to move. And Father God, altar car or no altar car, I truly believe people will be delivered, Father God, as they hear today's message. Father God, it can just be another word, but if we apply it, it becomes living. So I'm thankful, Lord, for this opportunity. I continue to bless this church, its members, its staff, Father God, that you put a hedge of protection around this church right now. That you let, Father, no more, Father, not even the disease. You don't let anything or anyone come near this church. And, Father, we're grateful, Lord. Continue to provide health, wealth, and prosperity, Father God, to Pastor Charlie and his families. And now, Lord, we lift up those families of those fallen officers as well, Father God. Peace be with them. Let them know, Father God, just as your word said, that those that mourn will be comforted. But now, Holy Spirit, this is your time. Do your thing. In Jesus' name we pray. Would somebody say, amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I like to tell our church that it doesn't hurt to say amen every once in a while. It doesn't hurt to stand up and clap when you feel the Holy Spirit moving in this place or you hear something that hits your spirit. Please do so. Let me tell you, it helps the pastor, any pastor that's up here preaching, it helps the pastor. And today, I know you are on church on fire. I'm going to talk from the subject, get up. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, get up, but not right now. Tell them, get up, but not right now. We're going to have an opportunity to get up in just a minute. We see 
this scripture, it says, I have told you this thing so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. It doesn't say you might have trouble. It says you will have trouble. Isn't this verse so relevant today? Isn't it amazing to see that we see this scripture and it's so relevant today with just the tragedies that we're seeing, with the struggles that we're seeing, with this whole pandemic? I don't have to tell you. I think you, you pretty much already know. But I'd like to clarify something because the verse says clearly, so that in me you may have trouble. Peace. Notice that it doesn't say so that with me or it doesn't say so that from me, but it says so that in me you have peace. If you would allow me to clarify is that peace is not a character. Peace is not a condition. Peace is not an emotion. In fact, peace cannot even be bought with a pill. You can't buy a pill that will give you peace. Peace is a person and his name is Jesus. And when you understand who peace is, then it really doesn't matter what is happening around me. Amen. I'm going to say that again. I said, peace is with me. He goes with me. He goes before me. He is around me. Everywhere I go, he's with me. So even though there's crisis, and even though other people are afraid, and even though other things, I have peace with me all the time, 24-7, in Jesus' name. Amen? And he went, and he goes on to say, take heart. Have courage. Church, let me encourage you today that courage isn't the absence of fear. It's actually the presence of faith. And today we see the story, the story we're going to read into Acts 12, 1 through 19 is the whole story. I'll only go through 1, 11. I'm going to go pretty quick because that's how we do things. But it's interesting that I need you to understand one thing is that church, you cannot control what happens in this world as much as you want. Women, let me talk to you women for a minute. You can't control your husband. You think you can, but you can't. You can't change him. You can't control him because you didn't make him. Man, you can't do that with your wife either. You can't try to manipulate. You can't do that. Church, you can't control what happens in this world, but you do get to choose how you respond to circumstances. And that's the one thing you cannot let the enemy rob you from. You cannot let the enemy rob your joy. You cannot let the enemy rob your peace. You cannot let the enemy rob anything around you that the Lord has given you in Jesus' name. We will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world, says the Lord. Can I preach? Acts 12, watch, watch, watch what it says, 1 through 5. It says it was about that time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to vital church, intending to persecute them. He had his James, the brother of John, put to death with sword. When he saw that this met with the approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. Verse 4, after arresting him, he put him in prison handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. I'll finish with verse 5 and then we'll continue later. It says, so Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Notice, there's a persecution taking place. The church is being attacked. The believers were being attacked. If you believed in Christ, if you wore a little cross on your shirt, if you had a vital shirt, you were going to get arrested. People knew, they saw, they saw the way you talked, they saw who you hung around with and they didn't like it, they were going to arrest you. Now it's interesting to think because we see James, the Bible says, was killed by sword. Notice, he wasn't killed by tragedy, he wasn't killed by a car accident, he wasn't killed by COVID-19, he was killed because he loved Jesus. I'm just going to preach this morning right now because your faith is being tested every day right now through this persecution. You heard me call it right. This is a form of persecution. They are testing the church. And I'm telling you right now, it's amazing to me to see that the people that never proclaim Christ are actually on their knees right now more than never crying and praying for the first time. And that is great news. But can I go deeper? It's a shame to see that those that will show up every Sunday are no longer showing up. Can I preach this morning? All of a sudden, you've put in your faith in your back pocket and you forgot that Jesus is greater than COVID. You forgot that Jesus uh, resurrected from the cross. You forgot that Jesus uh, touched the leper. So while people are saying, don't touch, Jesus said, bring him to me and I'll heal him in Jesus' name. Can I preach this morning? And so you got Peter arrested. He's going to trial the next day, but I'm going to give you a spoiler alert. He was going to die. He was going to die. That was the plan. The Bible clearly says he was guarded by squads of soldiers, four of them, four in each rotation, 24-7. I want you to understand something. If a soldier by any means would let any, 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 uh, what do you call it, prisoner escape, it was their life. They'd be done. Not only would it be embarrassing, but it would be embarrassing for their family and they would be, they would be killed. 
And so Herod, King Herod, is not taking any chances. This time, he's got the Bible says two, one on each side and one in each gate in the front. He says, I ain't going to let this guy get away. Now you say, why would it do, why would it take such great chances? I'm glad you asked. Because a few years back, Peter was also in prison. And the Bible says that an angel came and delivered him and freed him. So King Herod said, I'm not going to be that fool again. I'm not going to let that happen to me. I'm not going to be the one all over social media saying that I'm the one that let him escape. I'm not going to do it. Now, the differences between then, that time that he was incarcerated, and this time, two simple and two major differences. First difference back then, he wasn't, uh, uh, what do you call it, sentenced to die. And the second thing is that he wasn't bound in chains. So this time, they're definitely taking no chances. They're taking no chances. King Herod, I'm not going to allow it. Now, I want you to understand who King Herod was, because you've got to understand that most of the time, that the Bible doesn't, I shouldn't say most of the time, but all of the time, the fruit doesn't fall too far from its tree. Amen. People say the kids are such, such bad kids today and they're so spoiled. I say there's no such thing as bad kids, just bad parents. No one's saying amen, but I'm just going to just talk to preach to this side over here because I think this side kind of understands what I'm saying. But watch, I, I want you to understand where, where King Herod, King Herod was the grandson of Herod the Great. Somebody say the great. Now understand something here. There's nothing great about him. There was nothing great about him. In fact, he was actually a cruel and wicked man. He was evil. He was so evil, this, his grandpa was, that he would actually just kill and torture people just simply because he didn't like them. Interesting. And around the time, this is the same king, church, this is the same king who actually had children slaughtered. He had children slaughtered during the time uh, in Bethlehem, during the time when Jesus was born. Why? Because he got a tweet saying that Jesus, the son of the God, was going to be born, that a new king was being born. And this guy was not going to allow any kid to threaten his throne. So he says, and he's, any kid you see, he says, take them all. We don't need them here. This is who this guy is. And so his grandson, well, I got news for you, wasn't much better. His grandson wasn't much better. So no one, by any means, was going to be allowed to get to Peter. No one. He had no visitation rights, no afternoon visits, no recreation. He couldn't lift weights. He couldn't run. He couldn't do anything. Church, I want to talk to the church here for a minute. Have you ever felt or are you feeling, are you feeling in prison this morning? Are you feeling lonely? Are you feeling hopeless? Or maybe you that are watching online, maybe during this quarantine time where we kind of go in quarantine, we get out of quarantine, we're going to go and get out of quarantine, we don't know what's going on, ready to happen. Maybe you feel lonely, maybe you feel helpless and hopeless and you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. You might feel alone, but I've got news for you, you are not alone. You are not alone. In fact, the Bible clearly tells me if you see verse 5 again, Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying for God or to God for him. Oh my God, this moves my soul. Because church, I'm trying to talk to somebody this morning. Something happens when you pray. Something happens when you come together as a body of Christ. Isn't it awesome that I don't need 3,000 people to come into agreement? Just two or three and we can make hell shake by the foundation. Get up, somebody. And the Bible clearly says as it goes a little bit deeper <clears throat> that the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Now you got to understand the word earnestly. In the Greek, it means praying without ceasing. Not the kind of prayer that we do when we start at night, but we fall asleep. Oh, not this church? Maybe just lifeline then. Okay. Uh, not the kind of prayer that we just thank the Lord for our food. But when they're talking about uh, earnestly, they're talking about intercessory prayer. They're saying, I don't need to eat. I don't want to eat. I'm not moving. I'm going to keep talking to my Savior. I'm going to keep talking to my Lord until something happens. Because I truly believe when we come together, something happens. I'm trying to talk to somebody right now who's helpless. You've got a church. You've got a pastor named Charlie who's praying for you. Who's saying, we've been saving us seat for you. He's praying for you in Jesus name. And I'm telling you right now, church, if you ever need another breakthrough, don't post another verse. If you ever need a breakthrough, get you two or three crazy people who believe in prayer. People who will kneel down whether, wherever they are, who they'll stop doing what they're doing. They'll stop their work. They'll stop their cooking. They'll say, honey, wait, we can't be doing that right now. I got to pray for him. I'm just trying to talk to somebody this morning. Now watch, don't get distracted. Here comes the sermon. Verse 6. 
The night before, somebody say the night before. Herod was to bring him to trial. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. And sentries stood guard at the entries, at the entrance, excuse me. Suddenly, somebody say suddenly. Anytime you see that word in scripture, you know something's about to happen. Right? I mean, suddenly. An angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. It's basically what he did. And we'll get to some revelation on that in just a minute. Quick, get up, he said. And the chains fell off of Peter's wrists. Then the angel said in verse 8, come on, we're going to give him glory in just a minute. And the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. The angel told him. Now watch what it says in verse 9. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. And it opened for them by itself, kind of like an automatic door. You know, I like that right now. They don't want you to touch anything. You just walk the door open. That's exactly what happened. It says, he, uh, he thought he was in a vision. He said it opened for them by itself and they went through it. When they walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter, watch it, verse 11, came to himself and said, now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. Oh my God, this is powerful. He's asleep, the Bible says. And the Bible says because of their prayers. Watch, I want you to get this because we see a recipe here. Not only the power in prayer, but we're also going to see a recipe for those in bondage. First, we see because of their prayers, church, God sent an angel to Peter. Did you catch that? Let, let, understand that you get that. You, 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 you see, let, let me just kind of backtrack. Uh, 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 Pastor, the problem that we have nowadays is that we pray the wrong way. We pray the wrong way. Let, let me give you an example. Some of you are not going to like this, but it's okay. I don't live here, so I'm, I'm going to be going back to Heartland. I'm all right, right? But here's the thing. When your son or your daughter is living in sin, you're saying, Lord, please bless him. God does not bless sin. I got to tell you how it is because you've been saying, oh, Lord. I had a lady come up to me. I said, Pastor, you need to pray for my husband because I've heard these stories where people were released from prison and I heard, and I know he's in prison. I said, why was he in prison? I said, for drug trafficking. I said, I ain't praying for him to get out. I'm praying for him to be broken and then to be saved in there. You got to understand why you're praying and who you're praying and what purpose you're praying for. Sometimes your prayers aren't answered, not because, uh, because God didn't answer, but because you don't want to hear the response. Pastor, so what should we do? If your son is battling with drugs, if your husband's battling with alcoholism, you say, Lord, in Jesus' name, the moment he takes a sip, let him get diarrhea. Let him not be able to feel it. Let him think taste like, like, like the worst beer he's ever tasted. But let him be broken, Lord. Break him, break him, break him so that you can lift him up and mold him to the man of God you've called him to be. When you learn to pray according to his will, things happen, church. Can I pray? I'm not going to pray. I'm going to preach. Watch. But I want you to understand something. God didn't deliver, deliver Peter from going into prison. Did you catch that? Just like God did deliver Daniel from going into the den. You got to understand this because a lot of times we, we think, oh God, why did I get in? You're doing the right thing. Peter was doing the right thing. You're doing the right thing and something bad happens. God, how could you? If you only knew that there's purpose, if you only understood that his ways and his thoughts are higher than my ways and my thoughts, if you only understood that if you would allow that process to take place, something greater is about to happen in your life. Now watch. Hope you caught this. The angel brought Peter out of prison. Amen? But it was the prayer that brought the angel to Peter. So you see the pattern there. I've got to pray. I've got to have people that I know who know how to pray. Again, fervently who know how to pray earnestly. People who are people of prayer. Let me tell you, I rarely call people to pray for me when I'm sick. But when I do, I've got two crazy people. Crazy people that I know they won't stop praying until I am healed or delivered or helped. Whatever needs to be done. 
And that's exactly what is happening here. Now watch, there's power in prayer, church. Now watch this. This is a crazy story. So let's kind of, let's kind of do like a little recap. We've got Peter under arrest, not for being foolish, but for being a believer. He's being guarded by a total of 16 armed soldiers in rotation. And now we know that he's going to trial where everyone already knows the verdict. And the final thing, Peter is going to die. Let's just leave it at that. But here's what's interesting to me. I capture this moment and I think there's a powerful revelation here. We go back to verse 6 and the Bible tells me that the night before his death, what was Peter doing? I'm glad you asked. Verse 6 says that the night before Herod was to bring him to Peter was sleeping. Wait, what? He was sleeping between two soldiers. Now I want you to understand something. I picture him maybe thrown on the floor. I picture him maybe standing. I've seen several different illustrations of prisons back in the day. I can picture him with chains. Asleep. Now you got to understand something. How can one sleep knowing they're going to die the next day? Some of you can't even sleep because you don't know how to pay the light bill. You're so worried. You're like, oh my God, it's, I got to change the pillow. I got to change the pillow. I got to change the mattress. I got to go to 27. I was 26 last week, but I got to go to 27. Some of you will get that later. And you think it's so many things. If I order this sheet, if I order this comforter, you know what it is? I need to get essential oils. Let me spray some in the air. And you figure you can't sleep. Let me tell you, it's not the outside. It's the inside. It's the inside. When you have peace within you, it doesn't matter what's happening out there. If I'm tired, I'm going to sleep. It may be on a rock. It may be on the floor. It may be in a tent or it may be in a king size bed. But when Jesus is with me, I'm going to sleep and it's going to be good. <clears throat> now watch. How can one sleep the night before his death? I'm glad you asked. You'd have to have one of the best sleep therapists like literally available to you. And then I'm reminded, I'm reminded that when Peter and with the disciples were in the same boat with Jesus and a storm arose, I'm reminded that Peter was looking back and saying, how can this guy sleep? How can this guy sleep? Are you kidding me? In the middle of crisis, watch, in the middle of crisis, Jesus was not only sleeping, he was setting an example for things to come. My God, he set in an example for things to come and Peter sees Jesus. He wakes him up. He says, hey, don't you care about us? We're going to drown, bro. You know what I'm saying about drown? We're going to die. Jesus, I'm sure, was trying to get the sleep out of his eyes. He's like, are you kidding me, Peter? Are you waking me up for this nonsense? And Jesus, watch, did not pray for the storm. The prayer comes before. My God. The prayer comes before Jesus rebuked the storm. Pastor, what are you saying? Some of you are struggling right now in certain things and you keep praying for the very thing you should be rebuking. You should be rebuking that anxiety out of your house. You should be rebuking that, 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 that anger out of your house. You should be rebuking that depression out of your house. You're trying to be cute with the enemy, but this is a time to open your mouth and declare who you are in Jesus. My God, I'm trying to preach to somebody this morning. He rebuked the storm. He says, wait, 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 wait. If he did it then, if he's able to sleep in the storm, I should be able to sleep in the storm because I truly believe that Peter was saying, I want to sleep because if God be for me, who can be against me? He knew no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It may look like I'm bound, but I'm actually free. He knew that even though I walk through the valley of the Rio Grande Valley shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Somebody give him praise this morning. I got to keep going and I got to go fast to so stay with me. I truly believe Peter prayed according to, we'll understand this is a Peter, this is a transformed Peter. This is no longer the Peter that was afraid of the little girl that called him out when he denied him. 
This is a transformed Peter who is in prison and now has peace in his life and says, I'm leaving everything in God's hands. Basically, I truly believe Peter said in his, in his mind and his spirit, he says, you know what? It really doesn't matter if I live or die because I understand that to me to live is Christ and die is gain. I don't need him to rescue me again. My God, I just said something very, very important, but, but you, need, you need to get that. I don't need him to deliver me again. Church, let, let, let me just get on that point really, really quickly because some of us are just constantly waiting. What can God do for me today? I'll go to church if, I'll give if, I'll worship if. Church, if God never does anything for you again, he's done enough. Because you should have been lost. You should have been broken. You should have been in prison. You should have been dead. But his mercy and his grace has no dollar sign, no dollar amount to it, no value to it. You've got to understand that his grace and his mercy is priceless in Jesus' name. We should be grateful just because of who he is. And so many of us today are so afraid of death. This is what we're seeing. I told our church uh, when we were going through this whole nonsense, I told our church the same thing. I said, the struggle with the church and the struggle with the people is not going to be COVID-19. It's the fear that comes after. Amen. And here's the thing. COVID-19 is invisible, but fear is not. And we told the church and we prepared the church and we told them this and we said, you've got to understand that you cannot live a life of fear. Now, again, don't confuse being scared with being fearful. I'm, I don't like roaches and spiders. You come bring them to me, and my God, I'm going to squirm. I'm going to run. My wife's going to make fun of me because I can't kill them. But you bring me someone who is demon-possessed, and I'll cast that demon out in Jesus' name. You're not called to live in fear. Pastor, can I tell you what the Lord told me very clearly before we decided, after we were doing live stream and live stream and live stream, after they figured out that, Oh, wait a minute. We can't shut churches down. They're essential. Oh, hello. And they reopened them. Let me tell you what the church told me, what, what the Lord told me. Very, very clear. And he didn't tell me in a peaceful voice. He told me almost like hurting and angry. He said, tell my people this. And this is what I told Lifeline. And hopefully you can receive this. And if you're watching online, hopefully you get this. He says, do you really think I'm going to allow people to get sick in my house? Jesus was offended. I offended Jesus just thinking that in my mind I would have to shut it down. That's why I honor your pastor today for opening the doors. This is a hospital for the sick. You really think you're going to get sick in the house of God? On the contrary, you may already have it and walk through here and walk in healing and don't even know it. You'll be healed from greater things than COVID. Some of you through cancer. Some of you through HIV. Some of you through any form of sickness. I wonder if someone can get up and give them praise right now. God said I came so that you could have life and life to the fullest for don't you know that where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom somebody give him a shout of praise yeah. sit down I'm not done but I'm about to be can I go deeper two people I need about three minutes and I'm done. Three, four minutes and I'm out of your way. Watch. Just because Peter, just because Peter believed God could deliver him, I truly believe he said, if he doesn't, it's okay. That's the relationship Peter had. That's the relationship Peter had. Pastor, how can you say that? Well, we see in verse 9, if you go back to verse 9, we see something very important there. It says that he thought he was seeing a vision. Mind you, he was asleep, but he sees what's happening, and he thought he was, it's so far-fetched, it's crazy, he couldn't believe it. And I'm sure even before him, Peter thought, hey, Jesus died for me, I'll die for him. And that's the, that's the decision you're going to have to make, church. Because I've got news for you, and you probably don't want to hear this negativity, I don't think it's negativity, it's just realism. Things aren't going to get better. We just have to decide who we serve and stand on the rock and know that when the storm comes, we can rebuke whatever devil in hell and we can still remain. Now watch, now watch. But I see something very powerful here because not only do I see a prescription for the power of prayer, but I see a prescription for the power of bondage. There are many people right now more than ever in bondage. Alcoholism, gambling, shopping online, pornography. I can keep going. 
more than ever right now. They are in bondage, but I want you to see what happens. The Bible tells me in verse six that he was bound in chains, but verse seven, it tells me something very interesting. I'm going to go back to that same verse. He says that the angel came and he didn't say, Peter, papito, you okay, mijito? He slapped him up the head. Oh my God, y'all not hearing what I'm saying and I just gave you some revelation right now. He hit him upside the head, a version says, and it woke him up. Church, what I'm trying to get at is sometimes those hits that you get are not God trying to knock you down. It's God trying to wake you up. He says he hit him and watch, he doesn't say take your time. He says, quick, get up. You know why? Because we overanalyze and we overthink things. Should I go to church today? Oh, I don't know. What if I get COVID-20? No, oh, I can't go to church. What if I, I can't? Oh, the, 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 oh, oh. And you overthink anything. So sometimes God's got to knock you upside the head to wake you up because you don't understand that you're bound in fear. You're bound in doubt. And if he tries to just tap you, it's not going to work. So he hits you upside the head. The Bible says, he says, quick, get up. And the chains fell off. Did you catch that? He got up first and the chains came off. You see, some of you, I'm going to talk to online right now. Some of you are not coming to church because you're waiting for the fear to leave. You're waiting for the doubt to leave. You're waiting for certain things to leave. But God says, if you would get up, put up your pants, do what you got to do. When you get up, that fear will leave. When you get up, that depression will leave. When you get up, that anxiety will leave. Because who? The sun sets free. Is free indeed. I wonder if there's anybody right now who can get up right now, get up and say, you know what? I'm going to stand in fear. I'm going to stand in faith over fear. I'm going to stand believing that if God before me, who can be against me? I wonder if there's anybody right now, if you're ready, we're going to praise the name of Jesus. Are you ready? Lift your right hand up. Say, I'm ready. Say, I'm willing. Here we go, let's praise him like we never have.
together. If you're free in Jesus' name, get your hands together. Come on, I dare you to move your right foot, your left foot, your right foot. You're no longer bound in Jesus' name. Come on, start praising them like you love them. God is fighting for us. Put him back in darkness. Lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies to be And we will shout it out, shout it out. God is fighting for us. Put him back in darkness. Lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, insomnia that couldn't sleep and anxiety but you that are watching online you've got to make a choice choose today who you will serve it's time to stop it's time to stop saying we love Jesus and we serve Jesus and we can't show up it's time we show up the church is stronger than ever in Jesus name and Lord so I ask you right now those that are watching online that this sermon would shake them right now. That you would hit them upside the head. Not to hurt them, but to wake them up. To understand that this is a vital time. And this is why this is a vital church. Father, we continue to bless this ministry. No devil in hell. Devil, I'm speaking to you clearly. You will not come near this house. And all those coming through this house will be delivered even before they walk in through the lobby. Bless their finances, their leaders, their staff, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. In Jesus' name we pray. Would somebody say amen? amen. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. We've got a book we wrote called Plagues a while back. They are available out there if you want to 
be a you know, blessing to the ministry. I believe they're $10. Just stop by and get some. There's only a few left. So if you do that, pick up one of those books. It'll help you through this crisis. I'm telling you right now. It'll tell you how to break the strongholds of fear, failure, temptation, and so on. I'm going to give it back to your pastor. Pastor, thank you so much. I love you all. Have a wonderful Sunday. Be blessed. Come on, let's hear your Pastor Pepe. Amen. How many of you were blessed by that word? Such an on-time word. I always like to go home with a few takeaways, right? And those last two for me were powerful. Number one, that he, he got up before the chains fell. And sometimes you have to decide. You're waiting for the chains to fall, but God's waiting for you to get up and then break the chains. Amen? And it's amazing that God would allow us to collaborate with him in favor of our own breakthrough. And the second takeaway that I love is that, that not every time that God... Not every time you get struck, it's to knock you down. Sometimes it's God trying to wake you up. Amen? And I love that. And I think it's time for us to wake up. I think the, I think the nation, I think the world has been struck. And I think this is the Spirit of God saying, wake up and come back near to me. Seek me like never before. And I'm believing that God's going to see us through this. And we're going to come out of it in the name of Jesus. So are you and your family. And you will be blessed. Amen. Father, we bless every person, every family here are presented and those watching online may your grace may your favor be always upon them upon them your healing your protection in jesus name amen and amen we love you we will see you next week god bless you